Hey guys, it's Nathan, aka Xander here, just doing a recording. Uh, sorry, I can't stream, my internet's terrible. Uh, we're just doing uh, Matt vs Tyler Adams in uh, Standard. Uh, so we've got Matt on the bottom here, he seems to be playing uh, Blue-White Cycle. Very similar deck to the one I've, I was playing in Standard. And we're seeing Dinosaurs! On uh, Tyler's side. Uh, draws the forest so we can ramp out this turn. Getting closer to that Rip Jaw. He's actually going to cave out quite well. With no answers from Matt. Draws into a fumigate, so th there's the answer that he needed. Also, a countervailing wins. Even with just the one card in grave, countervailing wins is still going to be a relevant card. Yeah, Hunt Master, just ramping out. Quick turns by both players so far. He's just got to get, Matt's just got to hit those land drops to be able to play that fumigate, and he'll be looking pretty good. Ripjaw's going to hit the board here. Can't be answered. Curious to see if he's playing with the uh, poly Polyraptor combo? <laughs> and it's going to be 4 damage going straight to the face. land drops. He's going to be able to countervailing wins for two. But the rootbound crag means it's not going to be a problem for, for our Tyler here. So 11 damage going in. Big chunk off Matt. But he is going to be able to play that Fumigate next turn. So Fumigate is going to get him back in this game for a little while, but I'm not sure what he's going to... be able to do
Thunderhood ramping more. So we'll see Registaur hit the board. Just go back to Matt's hand. See, I got no answers for the Registaur, but the Drake Haven will be online next turn. Glacial Fortress getting him one step closer to approach. Savage Stump's surprisingly relevant here because it can even just take out Drakes without any problem. But not an instant speed. Let's see if Matt's going to chump. He could cycle the hieroglyphic here. Takes the damage and drops, it, drops down to 10. Three, six. Yeah, Chris, two, two, one, one step. Digging for that land, gets it. So there's going to be approach hopefully next turn. Def definitely the right pr play. I don't see red-green dinosaurs having too many answers. And that starts the seven turn clock. <laughs> it's, a lot of, uh, it's a lot of buff spells though. <laughs> So we're going to stomp, getting plus one, goes to five, five. Killing a drake, swinging, drops to twelve. So we can get him to eight this turn. Or whether or not he holds up the, blossom, the second blossoming defense as an answer to a, a cast out or a binding. No, he's going to run them both out. Swinging in for nine with the Regisaur. We pass the turn back to Matt, and that's going to bring us uh, six turns on the clock now before uh, the next approach. Unless, of course, he draws into another one before then. He obviously would have multiple in the deck. Now he can double... Double cycle and chump here, but it's not really going to be... Okay, so this will be important. Yeah, he's going to chump. And there's a the settle. Doesn't need to chump. Worked out well for Matt. And there's the concession by uh, Tyler. So we're going to go to game two.
just sideboarding now. I feel like it's just going to be a race, but as long as Matt can um, keep answering with settles and fumigates, the dinosaurs isn't going to be looking too good in this matchup. Okay, so we're back in. So not a terrible starting hand by Matt. And an interesting hand here by Tyler. Uh, curious to see whether or not he's going to keep this. And he does, okay. Hoping to draw into things that will get gut gut out sooner. Or Golta, sorry. It's going to be a couple of quick turns. Uh, into more ramp. Does he want to play Thunderherd though? Yep. Flaunting that Golter. <laughs> Cosmo here does have an answer for it with the cast out. I'm curious to see the um, abandoned sarcophagus in here too. He's going to be able to play his cards from his graveyard after he cycled them. I'll have to ask him after the game to see whether or not he's brought that in from sideboard. So Heart of Kieran in there, interesting choice. I'm not sure whether or not it's in there deliberately for the Golter or just to add some reach to the deck that the um, dinosaurs otherwise wouldn't have. So we've got Dracaven online already. Just trying to rush out those chump blockers before he meets a board of dinos, I guess. The two renewed faith, though, will keep him in the game. Even after taking a lot of damage. So I see Regisaur. Raging Regisaur hit board. So he can crew, have 8 power, and play a 4 cost Galter. Going to get him for 4 flying here. Brings Matt down to 16. 1 card in Grave. So he's going to be able to play Galter next turn if he doesn't put some cards into the graveyard here. He's going to be able to cycle a cast out if he wants. I suppose he just cast out the Galter anyway. Us knowing you won't have the, the hexproof answer, but it's not information that Matt has. Oh, well, it is now. <laughs> One card in hand, and he knows he's got a Galter. Try and play Galter this turn. Oh, he is. Not sure that's how I would have gone about it because going into four untapped land, there's counter spells, there's cast out, there's. Yeah. I feel like he's probably going to be a dis bit disappointed after he finds out that that Galter wasn't long to this uh, world. Swings in for another 4 here. Dropping Matt down to 12. Yep, and set cast out. 
It's definitely the way it should have been played. Another land for Matt. He needs to be drawing into a settle or... Maybe some more answers. <laughs> Another Galter. May as well be an all or nothing. So we'll see Galt hits the board. And Matt's not sitting on any answers currently, but... Excited to see some Galter damage getting in here. <laughs> uh, renewed Faith and Chump is about all you can do. So that was a bit of a misplay. He should have um, hit the hypergraphic illuminations there. Oh, scary damage. Draws in another plane. Still got two renewed faith here. But he's definitely going to be a short game if he can't draw into an answer. There's no, no cards in hand for Tile. Uh, Scrappy Ground's not overly useful in this matchup. Matt's seeming to draw all the. Uh, uh, so, so we'll see a concession here by Matt. <laughs> uh, which will take us to a game... 3. Good to see some early answers here from Matt. Won't be the fastest start from Tyler, but uh, Regisaur's nothing to complain about if you can get into it. It's got a hit board though, and We'll see in um, Matthew's hands that the Essence Scout is going to deal with it very quickly. The Drake's Aquadex seem to be consistently getting that Drake Haven off the, um, the top in the first few turns too, which has been really good for him. Consistently turn three. Oh, it's a shame he couldn't ramp into the uh, Rip Jaw, because now he's going to be playing it into uh, counter spells.
Uh, knowing sensors are going to be in this deck, I'm curious to see whether or not he ramps more. Yeah, good. That was, that was, that was definitely the right play. Now the Drake Haven's online, I'm curious, is he going to end step? Goes for the hard cast hieroglyphic to get more card advantage out of it. That search for his cart is going to be a big, a big help here. Helping him dig for answers. Not that he hasn't already got a lot, but... More, more can always be a good thing. So we'll see the Galter again. Ripjaw running out. Is he going to meet Death to Scatter? Yep. Not sure if we would have held, done that for the Essence Scatter. Because he's got the Settle. You probably could have let him play out a couple of creatures before you really needed to use the scatter and just waited for something like Galter or something a bit more, I don't know, imp important than a, a Ripjaw. So we see on Math's side of the board, he's going to have a... Very close to having enough land to already play an approach. He's hitting these land drops really well. Matthew would probably do alright to play Hieroglyphic again here. Now he's going to cycle Sensor and get a Drake. Could still do both. So approach is... Able to hit the board as soon as he draws into it. So I'll see a benefit of Sophocophagus coming out for the first time, which is going to let him play those hieroglyphics again. So it's just crazy card advantage coming out of the cycling deck. So we're going to see a Savage Stomp. Oh, sorry, my client's bugging. I've just got to get out of the game quickly to get back into it. Hopefully not missing anything too relevant. Yep, so he savage stomp, got rid of the drake. Swinging in for damage. Curious to see whether or not he tries to cast out here, because it's going to meet Blossoming Defense. But 
that settle's gonna do it. Keeping the dinosaurs at bay for another turn. Draw step for Matthew. There's counter trigger. So we'll see the Drake Haven come into hand here, but I'm not sure it's something he wants. Still couldn't hurt to play it though. Because if he draws into more cycle cards, it means more drakes. Raging Resistor, retire though. We see Matthew still has a cast out here, but the Blossoming Defenses can answer that. Hieroglyphic from the Grave. Venice Scophagus doing some work. The second cast out here is actually very useful, but that third Drake Haven's not so much. As counter, playing his cards from his graveyard also, and things not being put into the graveyard. So if a card with cycling would be put into the graveyard from anywhere, if it wasn't cycled, exile it. Oh, we see the approach. So this could be a, a pretty quick finish to a uh, standard. So seven turns. Looks at the top card, pitches it to the bottom. Is six turns, draws a card five turns, cycles two, three turns, hieroglyphic, two turns. So we can hier hieroglyphic search, double cast out cycle and I think that nearly gives him approach back in hand so it'll give a one turn clock for the dinos to pull this game out unless he wants to play it play it a bit slower he can always just control the board Damage here is going to drop Matt to 20. Still sitting on Blossoming Defense, which he can play, but he probably wants to sit on them as answers. Right, he's going to play him out. Wants to race that clock.
So we're in it for six here. Passes a turn. Let's see what Matt draws. Unless it's an approach or some useful card drawer, I think he'd want to be putting it, whatever it is, to the graveyard. But because of Ben and Sarcophagus, if it's a cycling card, it's not going to stay there. He could double hieroglyphic, draw four cards. But dead on board. He's just questioning the uh, card not going to the grave after the search for Ascanto. We've just just corrected him here in the chat, saying that the uh, sarcophagus was the thing that did it. So we're going to play out the cast out. Which is going to meet... Blossom in fence, but then it can cast out again, so that Galt is going to be dealt with. The cast out wars. So we'll see Galta disappearing. And that's looking in a really strong position now. It'll take some pretty strong plays that I'm not sure the Dino deck is going to have to be able to beat this clock now. Savage Stomp's not going to do it. Uh, 3-6-7. I think at this point he should be able to just take it. And cycle hieroglyphic gets him approach back in hand and he can play it. Unless I counted my turns wrong. So I tries counter trigger, digs and ditches. See how he goes about this. 
Yep. Oh, no. He's going to play it. This should get him. Search. Ah, uh, not search, sorry. Oh, really? I thought for sure it was in that top couple of cards. Uh, it should still be game here though, because surely the two cards that he can get here... Another Regisaur from uh, Tyler here. Too little too late, it's, he's going to take four and drop to eight. We should see end step a couple of cycles here. What's going on here? Tyler's not seeming to be attacking. Not sure if that was deliberate or whether or not that bugged, but. At this point, yep, so we'll see a concession here from Tyler, and Matt's going to win 2-1. So that'll be the standard games all done.